All right, got my iced coffee here. I think I'm ready to go. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. So today we're going to talk about forms and HTML and how to process the data and the code behind with Flask and Python. And we're kind of stepping away from the API, so to speak. We're not just using like query strings or passing JSON. Now we're kind of building some interface with HTML. So I'm not sure if this is going to follow the API tutorial. It might just be called a Flask tutorial and we just go from here. Uh, but we're still going to utilize some of the code if not well, we're going to keep all of the code, and we might re reuse some of it um, from here on out just to uh, keep things, you know, more consistent. But today we're going to create a form. We're going to go over the basics of, you know, creating a form and getting that data in Flask and Python. And maybe there will be a part two to this video because I don't want it to be too long, but in part two we're going to have our own custom form that we're going to ask for a video game console and the name of a game and we'll add it to our database just like we have been doing with the API and just a heads up I switched to using VS Code I find it easier to use and I don't know PyCharm just lately has just been getting annoying for me and I think I can zoom in a little better on here uh, so hopefully you guys can also see it but um, yeah, let's just get into it. Let's just talk about forms and having an interface for the form. So the first thing that we want to do is we need a place to store our HTML. And something we can do is actually add a new folder and call that templates, plural. So this is the default name for the templates folder. Um, this is what Flask looks for when we go to render this uh, using render template, I believe it's called. We'll see in a second. But if we use this render template to render the HTML, it's going to look in this templates directory for whatever HTML file that we're passing through. So let's go ahead and create a new file as well, and let's call that, um, I don't know, something like index.html. Okay, so we have our HTML, and let's just type HTML here in VS Code if you're using VS Code. And I'm going to click on this guy right here because it brings in all of the, uh, you know, whatever they call this. With it. There's a special name for this, I think, like the basic stuff. Um, I can't think of it, though. But anyway, that's, that's not important. This is just going to be our form example. So I'm going to make that in the title. And now let's just go to our Python. Let's create another route. And if you don't remember, we have an API route and we have a save route and we have a save JSON route. We don't have regular just a slash route. So let's go ahead and create that. So we're going to do out app.route and the path is just going to be a slash. And this is going to, whoops, I need methods first. Methods is going to equal, uh, let's do post for now. Okay, and this is going to be called, um, just call it form for the function. And let's just render template, uh, what do we call it? Index.html. Okay. So now if we go to this, it'll run this render template function and it'll render our index.html, which should be nothing more than just a title that says form example. So let's go ahead and run it. If you're in VS Code, if you hit control and the, uh, I don't know if it's called a tilde, no. I forget what the, it's right above the tab. And anyway, that brings up the terminal. And then you can type Python and then API demo dot py. Now we have it running. Let's go ahead and open that. It said method not allowed. This method is not allowed for the requested URL. Interesting. So our, our um, slash it's not working, it's not rendering that for some reason. Okay, so I, I started off with a few things wrong. One, we need a get because we're, we're returning this index.html uh, and then we're going to return render, render template um, index.html. So now if we save, hopefully it'll restart. Okay, now let's click that. And you can see it now works because the title is form example. Cool. 
So I'm already off to a good start. <sighs> I forgot one of the, the keys, but nonetheless, here we go. All right, so we have our index.html, and then I'm just gonna create a form in this. And then the action is just going to be a slash. And all the form action is, is it tells uh, where we want this to go once the form is submitted, all right? And for now, I want it to go to the slash. And then the method of this form is going to be post, because we're gonna post the form data to the back end, right? Via the post method here and the route. Cool, so now we can have a label and we can name this for whatever we want. I'm just gonna say username and the label is gonna say something like please enter a username. Okay, so label is nothing more than just text. Um, like a, like a paragraph or a span or, or whatever. So we have a label, now we just need some input, type text, and let's go ahead and give it a name. And the reason we need a name is once it goes to the back end, via the post method, we need a way to grab that particular part of it. So we need to give everything that has input its own unique name. For this demo, we're just going to have one. Um, one input, but just so you know. And we'll see that hopefully in part two when I build uh, the form for the video game. But the name is just going to be username for this example. I think that's all we need there. And then lastly, we need a button, Oops, button for the user to submit. All right. And then I think it's called type is submit. It's a submit button. So this should be all we need. We have the method in the form. We have the action, which tells uh, when it's submitted where to go next. Um, we have our label that says, please enter a username. We have an input field, and now we have a button for the user to submit. Cool. So now if I go back to Chrome and I refresh, let me zoom in on this, you can see all of our HTML here. Please enter a username, our little input field, and then a submit button. You can see I've been working on stuff in other applications just messing around, and I got some stuff here. Um, I think this is from, yeah, one of my programming classes. Anyway, let's just type in my username, and if we hit submit, you'll notice, you know, nothing really happened. We just went back to this, but our username was gone. And then the code behind, uh, you can see it posted, um, but we didn't do anything with the data because in our form uh, route function, we didn't we didn't do anything. We just rendered this again, and nothing less. So something we can do before we return index.html is grab the username, and then if we wanted to, we can store it in a database, or we could hold it in a session, or all of this different stuff I plan on talking about in the future. But for now, we're just going to make a username um, variable and set that equal to request dot form. And then this is like a dictionary. So the name that we gave it is what it's going to look like, uh, look for. So we gave the text field the name username. So we'll copy that and throw it in here. So it's going to look for the form and the value for the username field. And then we're going to store that in the username variable. Okay. So now we just want to, just to show that it works, print username. Then I restarted after saving. And let's go ahead and refresh this, make sure everything. No, we don't want to resubmit the form. Let's just uh, go up here, hit enter. And then here we go. Uh, key error. Um, it didn't get the username. It thinks that we submitted. So something else I wanted to do is put a little if statement here. So if request dot method is equal to post, then we'll grab this. All right. And then at the very end, whether or not it's a post method, we will render the index.html again. Make sense? 
Okay, that should work now. So let's go ahead and go back to Chrome, and we'll refresh this. Cool. Now if I put uh, YouTube test, and I submit, we're still not see anything on this end that looks any different. But if I go to VS Code here and we look at the terminal, it printed out YouTube test, which was the value for username. So we know that it now works and it got that data. So that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about in this video. In the next video, we're going to create a different kind of form. And it's going to ask the user for both a, um, a console and the name of a video game. And we'll store that in our SQLite database, as we've been doing with our other API calls. But anyway, hopefully you guys uh, are ready for part two and actually putting this info into use. And I will see you then.